To look at her, the Hey Queen After Show, where our super celebrity guest looks at some uh -oh. of the queens she's played with, slayed with, or even laid with, oh. <laughs> and spills a little tea. Oh, mm. vicious! Or throws a little she Ooh. if she has to, or just tells us something we don't know. Today, our superstar guest is, of course, Emmy winner mm -hmm. Delta Word. Yeah. I love being here. Oh, I love such, your show. A, such a delight. You have so much history. You've had such exciting experiences. Always a pleasure to Thank chat you. with you. I if you missed here. the main show interview, don't be lazy. Go back there and get the tea. It was delicious, right, Lady Red? It was. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Delta, you're an expert at this game. Okay. And you have a lot of knowledge about these girls, and you're going to find some new and interesting tidbits that we have never heard. You know, of. The, well, I, you, we can play Uno or Scrabble all the time. It doesn't get old. <laughs> exactly. It doesn't get old. You're right. I love it. So let us begin. Look at her. Manila Luzon. You know what? For me, Manila is like the perfect example of just a great drag queen. She's just the whole fucking package. She's beautiful. She has the ability to be glamorous and campy at the same time. And I, not a lot of people can do that. They really, really can't. She has such a, 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 an ability to market anything, to make anything. And you know, she sends me text messages sometimes telling me certain things that she thinks I need to do. She sent me a message. Uh, we were talking about the scarves that she did for DragCon. I don't know if you ever saw those. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful scarves that are a silly thing, but then a, a really smart thing other than a T-shirt. And then she was just like, why aren't you marketing a line of hairbrushes? Mm. You need to have some hairstyling tools. Go find your three favorite things. Just market them. Just find a company that'll do it, and people will want those. She's just like, I, I can remember when I was first coming up in drag, one of the first documentaries I saw was called Ragtime, and it was on HBO. And I remember thinking, oh, these are all famous drag queens that I knew nothing about and I had never seen, and I'll probably never meet them. And then one day I met Varla Jean Merman, and mm -hmm. one day I met Lady Bunny, and I met you know, some of these people. When I see Manila, I'm wondering if there's kids that are seeing her on social media, and they're like, oh, one day I'll meet Manila. Yeah. Is it going to be that for them? Because I think so. Look at Jasmine and I go back really, really far. Yes, we, you we do. We go back. Um, we have been part of Dream Girls for a very, very, very long time. And we've done tons of private events together. We both got to be on Drag Race separately, but got to be on. Jasmine is one of those people that is so funny, especially when she's not trying to be funny. <laughs> do you know as what I mean? As we learned on all third. Right, then. as we learned. And, and again, I mean, listen, I... I went home on a, on a, on a stand-up comedy challenge, <laughs> so I'm not reading anybody. I know, I know how, how scary that is. Yeah. And um, because a lot of times that we're told something about ourselves, so if you're told, but you're funny off the cuff by everybody, you just probably assume, like, well, let me just go do that. And so right, she did yeah. that. And, you know, I mean, somebody has to go home. I don't think it has, it's a, it's a casting and aspersion on her type of drag or, or her glamour or no. anything like that because... She's one of the most exciting people to watch live. She is truly one of the most exciting performers, and she, again, is hilarious. Was yeah. she always uh, as hilarious as she is now? Always. Yeah. Always a funny person. Always a funny person. Always. And you know, ja Jasmine likes to like Jasmine likes to spark and park. Yeah. <laughs> Jasmine likes to do all that. But for Jasmine, it's just always been a fact. Sure. And. Um, so people don't, I don't know how many people necessarily relate to her about that. They relate to her because of her videos, her viral videos yeah. and, and her like just being funny. And again, it's one of those things where off the cuff when she just says something, you're like, that is the funniest thing and you can't stop repeating it. And like the jush. Yeah. You know that. Were you there on set for the Hollis Lay special when she mm -hmm. walked out? Mm hmm <laughs> Do you have any tidbits on that situation? Not really. I mean, I know it was, you know, when you, when you're filming Drag Race regular season, you don't know anybody, really. Yeah. You just know these girls, like, casually. But All-Stars, you already know everyone's personality, and you've been on the road with them, mm -hmm. and you've eaten with them, uh -huh. and you've had them hold your hair when you puke, I mean, <laughs> all of that. 
So these girls all know each other and they know who's going to act a fool and who's going to need extra. And Jasmine's not about that. Mm -hmm. She's not about needing extra Mm -hmm. and she's not about acting the fool. Mm. So if someone is being perceived that way, she, again, she's like me or I'm like her, it's time to go. Uh huh. And I will say, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say who or where, but I am going to say <laughs> there's been situations where Jasmine had to separate herself because she sees the buffoonery being rewarded mm. and she doesn't appreciate it. Ah, well, very nicely said. Look at her. Stacey Lane Matthews. Ooh, that looks great. Look at, she looks stunning right there. Uh, she's been making a, a lovely uh, resurgence on All yeah. Stars 4. She was on set uh, for a couple of episodes. She was, she, was that all one day, or was that, were they filmed all those little parts? The magic of television. Okay, I don't so know. Was, that was all one day. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was like, well, they kept her here for weeks. So I was like, no, they put her in the corner <laughs> and told her to react to things that were going to happen for next week. <laughs> she uh, She's... Again, she's one of those people, you're always gonna get Stacy. You're always gonna get Stacy. She's, uh, she's slow rolling like I am. <laughs> I mean, we can just sit back and just laugh at things and look at things. We don't have to do anything. Mm. We don't wanna do anything. <laughs> uh, we can't do anything. Um, she, when she was on set and they, they told me, oh, Stacy's coming in to do something, I was just like over the moon because I love to just hang out with her. And yeah. there's, she's, She's super smart. She's super aware of everything that's happening, why it's happening. All these things that I had been recounting earlier on, on the main show, I, she sees the same thing. Mm. You know, she knows it. And um, doesn't ever try to be someone that she's not. And I've always admired that, even from Drag Race, because I can remember us having this sort of like, when she asked me like, do you think I'm competition? And there was all that going on. And there was plenty of that that wasn't even aired. Right. You know, between all of us. And I remember thinking to myself in that instance, like, well, we're contestants, but we're also cast members. So we're making a show. So we need to show our ass a little bit and give a little bit or else the camera's not going to be on us. That's the nature of reality television. Yeah. Unfortunately, not everybody was on the same page for that. And so I realized later, and that wasn't until our reunion, like, did you say that, like, because it needed to be said? Or Mm. were you just trying to be hurtful for camera? Mm. Or were you just trying to be funny? Or what was it? And I really realized through my friendship with Stacy that the person that I would hope to be or hope to perceive to be, which is just nice to people. Yeah. And just willing to worry about your own self, worry about your own shit. And when given the opportunity to... um, say something that may be true, is it really necessary? Right. Is it really necessary to say to somebody, no girl, I don't think you're competition. That wasn't necessary. I could have just said, sure, you know, we're all here. And I did say that later, but in that instance, there was an instance where I probably should should have and could have avoided somebody feeling bad about themselves. Yeah. It's hard uh, to it, be in the hard. Thunderdome, it's sweetie. Hard. It's, it's hard. a delicate balance between yeah. making television or hurting feelings right. or being your best person. But she's that person. She's a kind person. We, we love her yeah. here. <laughs> Look at her. Wow. Teleport us to Mars, Silatubby. I mean, a catchphrase machine, such an interesting person. You've worked together for many years, right? She's really energetic. She's really about, I mean, I remember when I very first met her, she was working in Long Beach at a club that we worked at, and then she told me, oh, I'm, I wanted to stay here and continue to do your show that you invited me to do, but I'm moving to Texas, and I'm going to work there. And um, One day I'm going to work with RuPaul and Lady Bunny. You'll see. She said these words to wow. me. I promise you. I promise you she said these words to me, and she'll tell you the same story. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, girl, you're crazy. We're not none of us are going to do all that, girl. And sure enough, <laughs> she called me. Maybe two weeks later, in my home, this I don't even got a cell phone back then. Wow. And she said, hey, it's downtown Tammy Brown. Do you remember me? I'm calling. I'm on break from my job at the Big Fisherman over here in Texas. And I'm going to be coming to California very soon. I don't know how, but I'm going to get there. And then maybe a year later, like she, had call, she would call me consistently. And then one call came a year later and she said, hey, guess what? I won a Jeep in a contest. I said, what? She's like, I won a Jeep and I'm driving to California and I'm going to be a star. And I was like, 
Well, let's be a star together. <laughs> she came to fucking town and she got on Drag Race and she worked with Lady Bunny and she worked with RuPaul and she had songs. Red will tell you back when we, we used to do brunch in Long Beach, we didn't even have flyers for the show and Tammy would sit up and make, get index cards and she would draw pictures on them, wow. the name of the club and everything. And she would stand on the corner and say, this is my flyer, I'm gonna be at brunch, you should come to Brunchettes, which is now at five different locations, run by Jules of Long Beach, wildly successful. And Tammy was handing those out. And I remember, I, oh God, I wish I still had it. I came across one in my storage unit. Wow. I wish I fucking still had it. I don't think I do, but ta that's Tammy. Uh -huh. I mean, I swear to God, that is a crazy nut, but 100% real. 100% about it. it. About that life. Like yes. any life, she's about that life. <laughs> and high as fuck. <laughs> Hi. That's why we love her, right, Lady Red? Yes, <laughs> sorry. All right, look at him. One of the newest girls in your sisterhood must feel exciting to see someone who's obviously been so talented and done so much so yep. many years finally get a chance. I will tell you that Nina uh, was one of the first, Nina's Club, uh, Axis and, um, what? Union Cafe, Axis and Union Cafe are the two um, clubs that Nina works at and I went there to work when I left Drag Race and I had a fucking blast. She's so cool. She's the, the first person that got me. We were completely stripped down to our underwear and bras with no wigs. Uh -huh. And she does this thing with Virginia West. Uh -huh. And they chug this, they call it the icing. And they chug like a bud ice. Or I don't even know what comes in it. But they do it. You have to do it with them. And they do it. And Nina and Virginia, I don't know how, how that works. But they managed to get the whole thing down in less than like maybe one or two seconds. But I don't know how like like the how the water and air even like you can't pour it that fast. Uh -huh. So how do you drink it that fast? She does it, and she is brilliant. I was super excited after I was on stage with Adele. Adele came to Columbus, and she was on stage with Adele. Awesome, brilliant. Um, she's super fun. She spends so she's so beloved in Columbus. I mean beyond. And, and, and everywhere, people love her. And I'm so excited for people to see her on Drag Race because runway after runway, I would sit there and watch her. And I, you know, there's something that happens on Drag Race, which I, when I was on and even after, it kind of bugs sometimes when they're like rewarding people for, you've improved this week. And I'm always right. like, why do you need to improve? Can't you just come here and be a bad bitch and then right, go, hey, yeah. guess what? You're gross, get out. <laughs> like, right. that's kind of what I want to see sometimes. <laughs> but I will say she came there and Michelle specifically would give advice and she would take that advice, and you could tell when she came back every time that she took it to so much heart, whether it was holding your face in front of the camera, or whether it was a shoe, or it was this or that. I just can't wait to see what people bring because she really is not just a professional queen and not just a seasoned queen, but she's somebody with so much heart. Mm. She has so, so much heart. She's fucking cool as fuck. Yes, we love Nina West cool here. I can't wait to see her on the Sparkle Couch at the end of 11. Look at Ha! For part two of Look at Ha, click here. For more incredible episodes of Look at Ha, click down here. And don't forget to subscribe! subscribe. <laughs>